So what's going on everyone, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be giving you an ultimate guide to Blood of the Dead. This is going to be your one stop hub for absolutely everything that you need in order to get very successful high rounds as well as complete a lot of the main objectives inside of Blood of the Dead. We're talking a guide on how to efficiently get the map open and all power on by round one as well as building the shield on round one, how to get the acid gat, how to get the magma gat, how to get the spoon, the golden spork the Hell's Retriever and the Hell's Redeemer. If you just want a godly strategy so you're all set up ready to go for high rounds on Blood of the Dead and want just an absolutely very simple to the point guide then this is the video for you and in the comment section I'll have timestamps for each specific buildable or strategy or objectives so that you guys can go to what you want to watch but I highly advise you watch from the offset of course because I'm going to show you that amazing round one strategy so you can get the shield and power on round one. But if you guys enjoy this video in Anyway, I'd really appreciate you guys letting me know down below in the comments section. And if you did enjoy, a like rating would be appreciated. Only takes a second, and that's a far longer amount of time than it took to create this ultimate guide. But anyway, let's jump straight into the map. So this is where we start off in Ball of the Dead. Of course, the spawn room right here. Not much to the spawn room, to be honest. It's not a huge, huge space, but we do have this area as well as an upstairs area. And within this, I'm actually going to be showing you the best way to play this map on solo. So you can optimize getting most of the map open by round one, getting on both powers, getting the shield built on round one. This is basically the best way you'll want to play this map. So I highly, highly advise you watch all the way through to understand how this works. But upstairs here, we have a Essex model 07 shotgun and the RK7 garrison pistol. We're going to ignore both of those. So here is the round one strat and I really hope you guys take use of this because it's so good even on co-op. So what you want to do is you want to have all the zombies on the map spawned in in the spawn room but you want to leave one zombie alive. So we'll deal with this one here. That'll be our last one left. So we've now got 1250 points. We now want to rebuild one window barrier and it will only let you to build one in total. It won't let you get any more points for any more. You can rebuild more but you won't get any points for them as you can see. But we have 1300. Other thing we can do in this spawn room is teleport this walnut a little bit back and forth, which is quite a fun little thing to do in your spare time, and it's a nice nod to Black Ops 1. So if this door on solo is 500, in co-op it can be 750. In solo we'll open this, and we've got two doors right here. We have the uh, new industries, we have the powerhouse, and also we have the catwalk. Now that's going to take us to the main part of the prison, which is deemed as one of the most like dangerous areas of the map to go straight away. But we're going to do this on round one because it makes the zombies far less uh, far less dangerous. They've got less health. We can make it. So there's the power switch. We've turned that on. Inside of here, we have a pack-a-punch area, which the machine can teleport to there, but it won't be there initially. We've got the uh, MX-9 on the wall, and we have a zombies box location, as well as a first perk machine, which is brew. So whatever you've assigned as your brew perk, that's going to be right there. So with our zombies still here, not in the catwalk, we're going to leave that area for now, that new industries, we'll get to that later. But now, I'm going to go ahead and open the catwalk. So with our zombies still there, open the catwalk, and they're going to have a shed load of zombies to start spawning on you. But as long as our last zombie is not one of these ones running towards us, we can keep this on round one, which is going to be really, really good. So yeah, doing this on round one, even in co-op, I would highly advise it just because you've got very weak zombies. It's round one. Is really really good and you can get round two dogs which is something that we also want so we have our Brutus there if you want to chuck a grenade up there whilst that's going on he's doing all that business it explodes right on him it's gonna make the dog spawn into the map it's also gonna make him angry and make our Brutus spawn which will help us get our key for the shield straight away so you just want to kind of take things slow a little bit we don't need to rush it but as you can see we're getting a ton of points ton of points now we got this Brutus here we can kill him with our special, and I would actually advise you not run this special. <laughs> I'd advise you to run the sentry gun instead, as that won't be able to kill him. But we're going to be looking for the first shield part, which is going to be one of these afterlife boxes. So if it's not there, we're going to open this up, but we're going to open it anyway. We've still got Brutus running around a rampage, but that's absolutely fine, because we're going to get a second one, and I'd rather use my special on both. So the box isn't there either. That can be where a second afterlife box can be. So it's obviously going to be outside the Warden's office here, which is going to be our third one. And there we go. We've got the Spectral Essence for the shield. So now we're going to go ahead and get the second power on so we can have the entire map open on round one, which is pretty good. Like, no other maps really in Black Ops 4 allow you to be this set up and to optimize this way. But heck, 
we're doing it here. So the next thing we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for a prison door as our second shield part. So we can have one spawning there, but it's not there. Uh, we continue on down. We've got another wall by there, which is the Spitfire, which is pretty good. There's our final zombie. There's the door part, but we could also have had it spawn right there. But anyway, we'll open here. We're going to have Brutus respawn because we ran away from him. We turn on the last power switch. And bam, we've got power turn on to both areas of the map. But we've got one Brutus, now two. Now, if I had my sentry gun, obviously we wouldn't be in this situation because I could easily just take these guys down. You can knock their heads off in one swipe with a katana, but when it comes to uh, actually using the katana well to kill them, I uh, wouldn't advise it. But the katana is amazing for solo play. When it's level 3, you can basically hide yourself from the zombies. It's the most useful special on in the Aether story without doubt. We could probably almost kill these guys. Okay, so no, we can't. But we should still be able to kill them very easily with our pistol. And uh, this is just the default starting pistol, the Welling. So there we go. There's one down. And there's two. And we get a little glitch because we had two on the same round. We get two keys. But now we've got all three parts of the shield on round one. So we can start opening up other parts of the map that require the key like that. That's going to be very useful for parts of the Easter egg and also for some of the other items we're going to get in this guide. And again, I'd advise you guys to timestamp in the comment section or I'll probably have a pinned comment showing you guys exactly uh, where you can find everything. But that's the shield all in one on round one. Very important we get that done on round one as that will just make your lives a lot easier. So we got pretty much almost the entire map open now on round one. We're just going to go ahead and uh, build the shield up here and go into round two. So we've got dogs, which is pretty darn useful. And then we can begin with uh, the last parts of this map walkthrough before we walk on to some of the more advanced parts of the tutorial, which I'm sure most of you guys already are aware of. But just in case you need any help on it, it's going to be the Hell's Retriever, which is the new Tomahawk in a side of Blood of the Dead. Where is this last zombie? Because I will find you and I will kill you. And this is where a good thing to start is when you have the shield, you're going to be wanting to have uh, Spectral Essence to shoot... Uh, shoot stuff with we need that so getting that done as early as possible start killing zombies very very early on with this shield which is it's good good etiquette for playing on this map so we're going to go ahead find this last zombie and get to our dog round which should be on round two look at that the round changed round two it's become all misty and foggy and straight away we got our dog round on round two which is fantastic so for any dog round when you're playing, you're going to be using the shield a lot for all all sorts of things within the map. If it's Easter egg related or if it's just items and stuff like that, you're going to need to have full blast on your shield. So just killing the dogs with the key is the fastest way to kill them besides using like a one shot weapon, like a shotgun or something. So I highly, highly advise you use your shield at all times for killing dogs because it's just so quick to kill them. You see that within a second, boom, they're dead and that's it. And there we go. The shield now has two full charges with the spectral shield. Just so, so quick. So now we're here in the new industries building, which is the other new building that you can open in the spawn room, which gets you this lovely area here. We have the mystery box, which can sometimes spawn here. And we have our first Hell's Redeemer, well, Hell's Retriever, I should say, location. Um, then you can do these in any order. There is no specific order in which you should complete these. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the three different dog heads done. So this is one you're going to be doing very, very quickly at the start of every game. That's because it's the first door you can open from spawn. But if you do the route I showed you to get the power on, then we've already got the shield. It's just a great way to set things up. But these dogs take about eight different zombie souls before they are completely filled. And the way that this works is you've got to kill a zombie one at a time. You notice this zombie will get sucked into the dog's mouth. He will eat the zombie. Then once that's done, you'll hear a sort of confirmation effect that he's eaten. And we can start killing more zombies and give him another soul to eat. And once that's complete, you're going to notice the dog is going to disappear. It will look a little bit like that. And once that disappeared, the head will continuously glow red. And that's complete. We can now move on to the next dog head. So using the fast travel from in between the new industries and powerhouse takes us to the cafeteria, which is a fast travel to get you back into the prison without having to cross that catwalk every time. As it's just uh, that catwalk is probably one of the worst places to play on this map because it's just so damn difficult. But we're going to work on our second dog head, which we accidentally got earlier when opening up the rest of the prison. And this is the second floor of the cell block. So yeah, just want to repeat killing about eight or so zombies until the dog head disappears. All right. And that 
dog's done, as you can see. So we can move on to the third and final dog cater, which is going to be in the Eagle Plaza, just between the Warden's office and the Warden's house. So run over here and open this debris. Bam! The final dog head is going to be right there, which we're going to go and complete and get ourselves the Hell's Retriever. I'm taking a quick look through the Warden's office. Before then, we have our second perk machine of this video, which is Tonic. This, that's where the tonic machine is inside of the warden's office. We also have the um, Vapor X KG, which is a pretty good, pretty good weapon by all means. Definitely pick that up if you guys are struggling to get something good out of the box. I'm also waiting for this dog to fill up. I might as well show you as well the warden's house, which is a very, very small, narrow playing area. Wouldn't advise playing in here because it's just so narrow. But we have a mystery box location here. We have a fireplace, which will be used for something a little bit later. A fast travel that takes you to the showers part of the map, which is very, very useful. And also up here, we have a Titan wall buy, as well as the first steps to the main Easter egg quest. And if you want to know how to do that, there's a link down below in the description to my Blood of the Dead main Easter egg guide. But I wouldn't advise you trying that until you at least know the map a little bit better and we can get some of the other things done because you're going to need that stuff done in order to finish that Easter egg. Okay, so that dog's done. So, boys and girls, now that we've done that, we can go and get ourselves the Hell's Retriever. So what you want to do in order to get this is you have to travel between either the Warden's House and Showers or Showers and Warden's House. And it will take you underground in this lava, which is the fast travel of this map. There's two different ones and this is the only place we can get the Hell's Retriever. So we grab that and bam, we have ourselves the Hell's Retriever, which is awesome. And then straight away after getting the Hell's Retriever, you should work on getting the Spoon, which is a melee weapon in this map, which allows a one-hit kill into the mid-tens. And that's going to be really, really useful and also necessary to even start the first part of the main Easter egg. So in order to do the Spoon, you simply need to have the Shield and you need to press left trigger to look in Afterlife and see we have four three numbers here. Four, six, five. These are going to be different in your game. They're random every time you play. So don't worry if yours are not the same. But we have four, six, five. So we're going to go ahead right here and go all the way down to the Citadel Tunnels. And we're going to go ahead and input that number into the little uh, number code thing that we opened very earlier on in the video once we got the uh, Warden's Key. So ours is four, six, five. So we're going to go ahead and pop this bad boy into the number thing here. So we're going to do left trigger to aim and right trigger to shoot a spirit out, which we got from killing the dogs. Again, reminder, kill the dogs using your shield key. Once you pop that number in, you should get a quote from your character and you'll notice that this big cage up here is going to all of a sudden fall. There you go. You can see the light started sparking and that fell. And that little skeleton there was holding a key. Well, that key is now in the water. So what we need to do is with the Hell's Retriever, come out to the docks, which is another section that we didn't show you guys. And remember, another thing in here is the ICR as a wall buy. But we open up here. We have our third buildable bench. First one we had is between the transverse tunnel. We also have a M1927 wall buy, which is awesome. We've got the docks, which gives us access to the gondola which should take you between here as well as this third floor of the cell blocks. And we've not even shown you the rooftop yet to get pack a punch because that's important. But up here, we also have another perk location, which is Cola. But now that we're up here, we've shocked the numbers. We can now retrieve our spoon. So you come down to here and with your shield, aim in and shoot this. It's going to make that light up. And you're going to notice this crane is going to start flying over. As you can see, the net is flying over. And when it stops, simply throw your Hell's Retriever. It's going to kill our zombies and we can now pick up the spoon. And there we go. There is our spoon, boys. So we're now going to be showing you an Easter egg on how to get a free Blundergat from the Warden's office without having to hit the mystery box or anything like that. And then we're going to work on getting the Golden Spork as well. So... What you want to do is we're looking for five skulls that are in Afterlife. And you don't need to be in Afterlife to see these. These just show you exactly where they are. But the first location we're going to be going for is on the docks here. You can see that skull that's just appeared right there. So we're going to throw our Hell's Retriever at it. Retrieve that skull. And there's the first one. And we can do these in any order, by the way. There's no specific order in which you need to get these skulls. These are just the order that I'm going to do it. Just because I was by the docks and might as well start. But we're going to go ahead and find our second skull. Our second skull is in one of the original locations it was in from Mob of the Dead. So it's going to be on top of this 
little pile there. The, that pile. Uh, I can't even speak today. That <laughs> electrical pole. That's going to be our second one. The third one we're going to be going for is going to be just on the other side of these cell blocks here. Going to be in the, near the library, which is the original um, spawn from Mob Dead and CD Street specifically. So it's going to be in this toilet there. I'm going to grab our fourth, which is going to be another area I've not yet shown you on this map walkthrough, which is going to be the rooftop. So make your way in here and we can get into the infirmary, which is a really, really cool place. There's going to be some stuff we're going to be doing in here later, but we are going to get our next piece from the roof. And this is also where you get Pack-A-Punch, which I'm surprised I've not even this done this yet for you guys, but I don't have a charge to show you. But there's our skull right there. The our skull location is going to be nested on this staircase here at the map. So we want to throw our tomahawk. Bam. We get it. And then just like that, we can now go to the warden's office and get ourselves a three blundergat, which is sweet. But we're also going to be going and getting this thing upgraded to the acid gat. So the first part for that is always going to be right here, which is in the transverse tunnel between the powerhouse and the... Um, new industries building right there it's always there and as you can see it's on our hard as one of the parts there so we're going to be going for the second and third parts which is going to be very very simple as you can see right there boom there is our three blundergat which we can pick up which is really cool instead of hitting the box all the time till we get it so let's go get these last parts for the acid gat so the second one is going to be this part here which is going to be in the office which you need the key to open and we're going to need to do the same thing again for our third and final part which is going to be in the infirmary just below the roof right here just open that up boom we have all three parts so now we can go ahead and build this at one of the three buildable stations i've already used the one up here for the shield so the other two locations are back by spawn or by the docks so i think i'm going to go and build this at the docks the bench is right here so i'm just going to hold square it's going to craft my acid gat kit and i can just pop the blunder get in there and just like that it's going to be converted into a much much better weapon which is the acid gat kit awesome stuff so now we're going to work on getting the golden spork my friends the golden spork which will give you a one hit melee weapon up until round 34 it sounds absurd it is pretty crazy it's not a necessity in your games but if you want to be the ultimate collector of all the things to do inside of blood of the dead aside from the main easter egg which will end the game then this is what we're going to be going for so you need the acid gat kit or the blunder gat or the magma gat in order to go ahead and do this and we'll show you a little bit later in the video how to get the magma gat as that is the best weapon on the game if you've got a blunder gat you might as well have it as the magma gat because that is the only real way to truly use the blunder gat but to start off the golden spork you need the spoon so now we've got the spoon we just want to go up to this bathtub and place the spoon down there just like that and the next thing is we're going to need to get about 20 to 30 kills with a blunder gat, acid gat or magma gat up on the rooftop. So I'll join you once we've finished doing that. I'm pretty sure for this to work you need to solely only use the blunder gat. You can't be getting kills with anything else or it doesn't work. I advise if you're doing solo instead of just wasting your ammo willy nilly. Train all the zombies up till you've got most of them spawning in that you need. And then just go ahead and just fire a shot. They're all going to be attracted to it and they're going to die. Simple as. Now to check your progress on this at any point in time, all you need to do is run back to the bathtub we put the blood in. As you can see, blood from the zombies we've killed is seeping through the ceiling and is filling up this bath, but it's not quite full yet. You'll know it is because we'll be able to interact with the bath by holding square or X, whatever console you're playing on, and you'll be able to drain the bathtub. So we're going to be working on getting the bathtub full of blood so then we can drain it. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and check if the bath has been full anymore. I'm pretty confident it has. Yeah, that looks full to me. So we go up to square, up to the bath, hold square. And you'll see that the bath has drained of all the blood. And um, we've done that step correctly. And now we can move on to the next step. I believe the final step. So the last step is going to involve us going back on the dreaded catwalk that we started at the start of the game. And I'm pretty sure this step at this point, now Treyarch has added several different patches into the game, involves you destroying the water tower. 
but I'm pretty confident this can still be done without destroying the water tower. But I think Triarch's intention was you had to shoot four hinges on, our, on all sides of the water tower for it to be destroyed before you can go and grab your um, golden spork. But I believe if you just throw your golden spork around here, it comes back and you have the golden spork, which is that one knife kill until round 30 something, which is just insane. But I'm going to go ahead, kill these zombies with my spectral shield so I can get some souls for it. So I've got some power in my key. So I can actually go ahead and use that to get ourselves Pack-A-Punch open, which is going to be really, really useful. Since we've got our first dog round on round two, getting our second one on round nine. So that's pretty crazy that already this high up in the rounds, we've already got ourselves another dog round which is useful and again you want to be using your shield to kill all these dogs because it they die extremely quickly when you're using the key and it's a good way to drain uh well drain is a good way to get your shield up i also recommend that during this game preferably before round 17 if you're going to be starting the easter egg you're going to be want to be hitting the box a lot until you get a uh, a padlock which is going to be useful for getting ourselves the upgraded shield that should almost be all the dogs, but I'm going to go ahead and get Pack-A-Punch unlocked, which is officially step one of the Easter egg. want to make sure that we are starting step one and also getting you guys Pack-A-Punch in case you have no idea how to do that, because that's going to be very important for getting your weapons upgraded and all that stuff, and basically surviving longer in the round. So now we've got shield charges. We can now go back to the roof where we've spent so much time. We can go ahead shoot that and it's going to spawn in the pack a bunch machine from the afterlife ghosts which is pretty awesome so i'm going to go ahead and place this inside of the pack a punch you're going to get another brew to spawn which is always fun we go ahead and grab our gun out of the pack a punch before it disappears so we've got the upgraded acid gap the vitrolic withering but we want to get the Magma Gat, which we'll be doing very, very shortly. Buy myself Quick Revive. Very, very good on solo. I'm going to go ahead and take this poor guy's soul. Finish off this warden, see what else he drops. A double points. Okay. Pretty sweet. So now we can work on two things. We're going to be working on getting the Magma Gat, which is going to be so, so important for the later rounds and basically for the whole survival of the game. And also going to work on getting the um hell's redeemer which is a upgraded version of the hell's retriever now it's not necessary in your games to do this you don't need it by any means it's not for any easter eggs but you know we're, we're showing the ultimate guide here on how to get everything and obviously that is included in the process so what you need to do is you're gonna have to start training zombies up here on the recreation yard specifically on that part up there and i do do advise you doing this earlier than what i'm doing because on round 10, this is obviously going to be pretty darn hectic. And it's quite a pain in the ass to do, really. And yes, I did just say that. But essentially, you want to be training up zombies specifically in this section of the recreation yard. And you want to be killing them with your Hell's Retriever only. Exclusively Hell's Retriever. And that wasn't great since all the zombies are sort of piled up together but i guess it's a good way as well because i'm not gonna have a lot of zombies gonna be respawning in yeah but if at any point it gets a bit messy just use your anywhere but here also we now have the golden sport so i can do that with our anywhere but here we get taken just back behind there which is great if we can go ahead and start using the hell's retriever again start getting some kills but yeah definitely don't make it as hectic as i just done there the earlier the round the better but you want to be using just tomahawk only to get these kills and this is where you can sort of hug the sides here run around in between any gaps you get and take the zombies out this way but we're going to be doing this until you hear a wolf's howl noise and when you hear that that's when you know you've done the you've got all the necessary amount of kills and we can move on to the next step but bam there we go killed quite a few right there but yeah we're just going to be repeating this process until we hear a wolf's howl so I'll be right back once we get that. There we go. We just got the howl, the wolf's howl there. Finally. I wouldn't recommend doing this after doing the golden sport because it is just absolute insanity. But in order to do the next step, we're going to need the shield. And we're going to need to throw our tomahawk specifically into a certain 
dog head that's going to spawn around the map and there's going to be quite a few locations for this which we're going to be showing you guys now now these are all different depending every time you play sometimes you'll see them uh, appearing in some of these spots sometimes you'll see them appearing in other spots it can always randomize and there's a lot of very very sneaky spots which we'll be showing you guys right here so the first one is going to be two locations for it, which is going to be in the Eagle Plaza, which is going to be between the Warden's office and the Warden's house. Now, our first spot can be right behind the house here, which, wow, wow, for the first time in forever. I've never had it there in a game ever, but it's actually there. But if it's not there, then it could also be down there by that pipe in the rock under the lava. So I'm not going to do it just yet, because I want to show you guys the other locations, and these are very very sneaky and like i'm saying these are terribly bad there's also going to be three locations in the citadel tunnels which i'm going to be showing you guys now so if you didn't find it in either of those two eagle plaza sections then there could be some very sneaky spots the first one could be right there if you're looking in your afterlife shield another can be right there if not then in one of these windows you'll be able to find one which i believe it's going to be right there now the recreation yard is definitely the worst for this because there are four spots and these are in some of the worst spots i've ever seen in my life like these are just downright disgusting locations for this i'm going to be showing you them all right now so if you've not found it in any of those spots then come to the recreation yard and there's going to be a spot if you look for your afterlife shield which is going to be right around here if there isn't one there, then that's fine. We can continue on. And there could be one which is going to be... Hang on, I need to get my bearings here. There could be one which is right there. There's also a fourth spot that you could possibly get if you look through with your shield. Which is going to be right there. Or here, I should say. Right there. And then if not, then the worst location and the fourth and final one, which is so, so horrible, is going to be tucked right down there. It is really, really horrible. Just make sure you keep checking. But my one was obviously right between the warden's office and the warden's house. So I'm going to go ahead, go to that dog head, and I'm going to simply throw my retriever in that dog head. So yeah, like we saw, my one was right there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my hell's retriever right there. And it's going to disappear. And uh, yeah, my tomahawk's now completely disappeared so what we need to do now is wait until we get to another dog round before we can finally retrieve my redeemer which involves us finding a ghostly dog that appears only on dog rounds but whilst we're waiting for that might as well try and get the magma gap for you guys as that is one of the other things we've got still left to do in this video, which is pretty, pretty easy. So you're going to need any version of the Blunder Gat. It can be a Blunder Gat, it can be the Acid Gat, doesn't really matter. I'm just grabbing soda so I've got a bit more health. And I should also probably use this. Totally not get where I need to go at all, but go back to spawn and hit the box. So not only try and get a better gun, but also try and get an upgraded shield, because that's something which... I'm also going to show you in this video because this is the ultimate blood of the dead guide and you guys will need the upgraded shield in order to get yourself everything you need and oh did you hear that dog spawns you know what to do boys you know what to do get your shield ready it's going to be collecting them dog souls oh there we go and also just a reminder i'm sure you guys already know this the dog spawns on this game are very aggressive very very aggressive we also want to make sure you've got a full shield at basically almost all times. So our Magma Gat upgrade adventure starts in the Warden's house, where if you have a Magma Gat, well, if you have a Blunder Gat, Acid Gat, upgraded Blunder Gat or upgraded Acid Gat, you can simply place it into the fireplace, and it's now stuck in there. And you are also stuck in here, as you can see. We now have these weird afterlife sort of portal energy around the doors and the windows, and we actually can't leave this area. If you leave... You're going to fail and you're going to lose the blunder gat you placed in the fireplace. So if you're playing on solo, obviously don't leave. If you're playing in co-op, your other teammates can leave and they can come join in and help you if they want. But yeah, you are going to lose it. So don't leave by any means, boys. Okay, so we're going to fill this up by collecting souls. Which you get by killing the undead, obviously. And you can kill them anywhere in this room. It doesn't have to be 
specifically where I'm showing you guys. It can be anywhere in the room. Definitely recommend your special. And as you can hear from that noise, once you hear that groaning noise, that's already done. And as you can see, the portal has disappeared. So we are all good. We've done the quest, boys. And we can move on to the final steps. Where we've got to take our Magma Gat from one side of the map to the other. But I'm going to want to make sure that I'm in a safe place before I do so. Oh, that's going to come in very handy. So you don't want to pick your Blunder Gat back up until you're in a good spot. Until you know you can do this. So I wouldn't advise doing it in the middle of the round because... Yep, and there we go. Dying Wish. Basically saving my life. So I'm going to run out of here before I go down again. Because that's not what we want. Yeah, Dying Wish, by the way. Absolute clutch perk. Like, it's so good. So I'm going to use the gold sport to get rid of some of these zombies here. Got myself down to just two. Okay. So you don't need stamina up for this, but I would recommend it. But when we take this blunder gat out of... Well, we've got to deposit the essences first. But once we've taken the blunder gat back out, it's now a tempered blunder gat. Where it's going to run out of heat very quickly unless we go and replenish the heat by going towards these blue cauldrons around the map. Now you've got to run it in this exact route that I'm doing right here. Otherwise, you're going to fail it because this is the ultimate route, the route that will replenish the Blundergat with the blue flames around the map via these little sort of cauldrons. And it's going to take us all the way to the new industries building where we'll be able to forge this into a Magma Gat. And since I've already upgraded this, this will become the upgraded Magma Gat, which is an absolutely insane weapon. It's the only weapon you're going to want really to have in this game. Besides a normal gun, of course, but this is like super, super OP. You see, I just got one from that cauldron there. If you guys missed that, done that very, very quickly. And then, bam, the final one there. And you run it all the way until you get to here. Appears to have worked. Here you see two lovely ghostly spirits of Alcatraz. Cooking our blunder get up nicely. And we are left with our Magma Gat. And a lovely, lovely Brutus that spawns as well. That's because we can't have nice things. But the Magma's Operandi, as you can see, is just one of the best weapons to have in the game. All the zombies get attracted to it. It does damage to them over time. It can kill lots of dogs as well. To kill dogs efficiently with this thing, you just shoot it. In an area which you're about to run through. Dog's going to run over that. Bam, they're dead. Super, super good. So just like that. Takes out dogs. And also this is the best way to gain points as well. Because the way that Black Ops 4 Zombies works. You gain points just from uh, kills to the zombie. Not actual like full-fledged damage. Doesn't work anymore like that in older games. Where you've got points for putting damage into the zombies. This is just for actually getting the kill. And this is the easiest way to, mo to just mock up a load of points very very quickly like in this game probably by like round 20 i should have about 25,000 points maybe even more than that very 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 simple so now we have our dog round which is what we were looking for everyone so around the map you're going to be using your afterlife shield and you're going to be looking for a blue dog in afterlife that's going to be walking around now this can be absolutely anywhere around the map it does a circuit from the warden's office and then goes around the map, ends up in spawn, and then sort of does a circuit all the way back. So I'm going to try my best to not let these dogs destroy me. But I'm actually going to try and get one dog down because we do need souls. Because we're going to need to spirit blast this dog if we see it. Now this is without doubt the most annoying step out of all the easter egg steps you can do. Because you're basically without a redeemer and can't do any of the other easter egg steps for the main quest until you get your retriever back. But it will be a redeemer, which is always great. And it can kill more zombies. It's going to be a lot more useful. So if you're playing in co-op, highly advise you get other people to scout around the map looking through their afterlife shield in different spots. Just to see if they can see the dog. I've cut to some completely different footage here of a different game just to showcase one of the locations where the dog can be. But it simply is going to be roaming around the entire map. But I found it in the warden's office just sneaking around. And when you see it in the afterlife vision, the spectral vision, you just need to shoot it with a shield blast. You'll hear the same howl noise that we heard earlier on once we got the tomahawk kills. And from there, you just simply use the fast travel between the warden's office and the shower 
powers or vice versa and you can pick up the hell's redeemer where you picked up the hell's retriever and there we go we've got the hell's redeemer it's that easy and the final thing that i've still yet to show you in this video is how to get yourself an upgraded shield which is very very easy and is so necessary later on when you're doing the main easter egg as it can hold tons more charges you can power up more things it can hold four charges rather than two and i believe it could be a little bit more durable but either way it's a very easy upgrade to get and all you need is the main normal shield so keep hitting the box until you get a padlock once the padlock is about to appear get your shield out and use your key to suck the life out of that padlock until the keyhole in the padlock turns white and simply throw your hell's retrieval or hell's redeemer depending on whatever you have at the padlock from the box and suddenly you're going to get the upgraded shield which is the tune spectral shield which will give you four blasts instead of two and it's just damn right a really really cool shield to have so i definitely advise you doing that but that's going to round up my ultimate guide to blood of the dead there isn't really anything else much you can do from here that's necessary in getting to a high round or starting the easter egg or just being equipped with all of the cool stuff that you can get within this map but if you enjoyed it please let me know down below if you want to see this for the other maps in black ops 4 zombies let me know and i'll probably get around to working on those depending on if you guys want to see that or not but hopefully this has been a very useful video. If you did and you want to see more content like this, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button as I would really, really appreciate it. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.